So let's talk about the mixing board. I think the mixing board is one of those devices in the recording studio that many people look at as the definition of a recording studio. All of those knobs and controllers, you know, looking like the Star Trek Enterprise. Um, and so let's break the mixing board down. And today let's introduce the mono channel strip. You know, when you look at a mixing board or you go into a recording studio and there's all these knobs and buttons, you have to realize that it's basically made up or comprised of individual channel strips, most of which do the exact same thing. So when you know what one channel strip does, you know what they all do. So today we're going to talk about the mono channel strip. You know, that's that single one channel audio source you know because a lot of mixing boards have both mono and stereo channel strips but we're gonna focus on mono because when you when you hear about mixing boards and you might hear about a mixing board as being a 32 channel mixing board or a 16 channel mixing board well that's giving you a good indication of how many individual sound sources can be connected and again oftentimes some of those sound sources are stereo um, but again let's let's focus on the mono channel strip so when you think of the word channel think of an audio channel as being similar to a television channel so if you want to watch a particular program like the Super Bowl you need to turn to the channel that is the source for that program for example ESPN okay on that channel only that one program which would be the Super Bowl in our example will be playing now if you want to watch another program you need to turn to a different channel and each channel holds one source this same principle holds true for mono mixing board channels you know one instrument one source is going to be plugged in on each channel okay so let's look at the channel strip and we're going to look at it from the top down okay we're going to begin with our input section you know our input section is where we plug in our microphones and our instruments and all type of goodies and we're going to start with this first jack which is the XLR input and this is your microphone input you know your microphone input is a balanced audio input so it has in those three prongs that you see there a positive a negative and a ground input you know and the term XLR stands for Canon X series connector with latch and rubber I mean it's an interesting name and there's a historical definition behind it you know the individual who created this type of plug his last name was Canon and they were looking to create a plug that really had um, less electromagnetic interference you know you didn't want noise getting into your signal so the guy's last name was Canning the first plug he created was the X series that's where the X comes from um, the next phase in his development was um, the X series with a latch and that's where the L comes from and then moving on there was a rubber compound used um, to again ensure a signal that was noise free so XLR that's basically where the definition comes from um, then we have a jack underneath that this is our line level input this is for our quarter inch or our balanced audio cables you know and a lot of times you'll hear this term TRS which is tip ring sleeve versus TS which is tip sleeve um, basically you know when you think about an instrument cable maybe a cable you would use for a guitar or for a, you know a bass guitar or a guitar these are typically TS cables okay they have a tip and they have one sleeve or one kind of ring underneath that tip um, and so in many cases this type of cable is what you're going to use for instruments and if it's a, a cable that isn't very long tip sleeve works great but the tip ring sleeve has the tip but then has two rings one is called the ring the other is called the sleeve and this is again is a balanced cable so it's gonna get rid of any potential electromagnetic noise 
so that would be the difference but this input this line level input is really important if you're not plugging in a microphone you're probably plugging in an instrument or some other type of um, quarter inch input so this would be the jack for that right under that you have what's known as the insert jack this is also a quarter inch uh, balanced input which is for direct effects so if you wanted to plug an effect box like a reverb or a compressor right into this channel and this channel only you would use that jack um, this jack can also be used as a direct out and nowadays the way uh, digital audio workstations are set up you know DAW you hear that term a lot is that individuals might want to run a mixing board first and then from that mixing board run into their audio interface so this is the jack that you would need to use to actually make whatever's coming into that channel go out to the audio interface so that's called the insert jack okay so moving right along the next knob that we come to is the gain or the preamp knob this is for preamplification or gain adjustment you know when you have something plugged in here you have to turn this knob up in order to let the sound in or let the signal in and this is similar to a water faucet you know how if you turn a water faucet on water starts to flow the more you turn that faucet the more water flows so it's a similar principle but but it's sound that flows when you turn up this gain or preamp uh, really important stage here because this is where you're actually letting that sound that's plugged into the XLR or plugged into the line level actually come into play underneath this is a compression knob um, this is not a standard feature on all mixing boards it is a feature on the Yamaha MG 166 C which is the mixing board that we use as a training tool at Little Drummer Boy recordings so that compression knob when you turn that up it kinda adds punch to the signal that's coming in right there by reducing the dynamic range and boosting the volume you know so so these initial input jacks and knobs are what would be called the input section of a mixing board okay that's that input section now underneath that we're going to get into the mixing section of the mixing board and that mixing section um, will begin in a second but before that there is a little button right under the gain preamp knob and this is on the Yamaha MG 166 C that little button is called a high pass filter switch or HPF okay and it's set for 80 Hertz so when you press that button in what happens is all frequencies under 80 Hertz get cut off or rolled off and so what it does is it has the impact of making your sound a little bit clearer so this is a switch you can push if you want to cut off those frequencies under 80 Hertz okay and again all that is the input section of the mixing board now moving to the mixer section um, we approach what's known as the equalization section and this is these green knobs here okay and as we work our way down we'll start with the first green knob which is the high EQ okay now this basically controls um, the high frequencies that will exist in the signal that is on this particular channel so you can boost that knob or turn it up to increase high frequencies or you can cut it to decrease high frequencies this is a fixed band EQ it means you can't control the actual frequency It's actually when you think about EQ filters it's a shelving EQ and so that's the high EQ you know moving down the next two knobs represent the sweepable mid-range EQ okay now the top knob allows you to adjust the frequency the bottom knob allows you to cut or turn up or boost or turn down the frequency of the sound on that individual channel this is known as a semi parametric EQ okay and if you think about EQ filters this is a peaking filter okay it's more like a bell curve this is um, pretty important because when we think about sound you know it's really the mid-range that a lot of people focus in on and having a sweepable mid-range allows you to actually 
um, determine exactly what frequency do you want to manipulate. So that's what the sweepable mid-range is. The last knob in the EQ section is the low EQ. And you boost to increase low frequencies and you cut to decrease low frequencies. I think I have the word increase there, but that's all right. Um, and again, this is a fixed band EQ, you know, also known as a shelving EQ. So you can't really control the actual frequency, but when you turn this up, you boost those low frequencies, you turn it down, you cut those low frequencies. All right. The next section in the mixing section on the mixing board is your auxiliary send controls. Okay, your auxiliary devices would be devices like um, equalizers or reverb or delay effects that might be a separate hardware device that you actually want to be able to pipe into your channels on your mixing board so these next knobs are auxiliary send controls they will adjust the level of signal sent from the channel to these auxiliary buses and we're going to talk about the auxiliary section and busing in a later chapter of this mixing board section but just understand that this is where you control um, how much of this channel gets sent out to those various effects that you might want to use and these are hardware effects these will not be effects that are connected to the mixing board these will be separate effects that you want to bring into or um, cable you know connect cables to pipe into this particular channel or other channels all right then there's a, a little button underneath the auxiliary sends and this is on the Yamaha MG 166 C um, and this is the auxiliary pre switch and this will work um, on the second of the orange knobs and this basically will say you know when you want to have a separate effect connected to this mixing board okay if you push this button the effect will be added to the sound before it gets to the fader Okay, when that button is pitched, it, it is basically pushed in. And further along in this audio engineering course, we're going to talk about pre and post. But I wanted to introduce this switch. You know, you may not use it right now, but you will see that switch on the Yamaha MG166C. The next knob is the effect send controls. And this will adjust the level of signal from this channel that is sent from this channel to the digital effects bus so we're dealing with this mixing board that has effects built in okay so with this particular send control you can send it to the onboard effect effects or built-in digital effects and that's really a great function to have on a mixing board underneath the effect send control we have the pan pot or the pan control and that's going to adjust the stereo positioning of the channel in group buses or on the stereo main so that's left or right do you want that signal to be in the center do you want it to be left do you want it to be right and it will pertain to how you have routed this signal you know we're going to get into group buses we're going to get into the whole stereo thing and routing and in subsequent videos but this pan pot control gives you a lot of control over where you're actually sending this signal underneath that pan pot control we have the channel on and off switch okay this is important because that channel on and off switch has to be you know pressed in in order for that channel to be sent to the buses um, or the stereo main if that channel is not pushed in you're not going to hear it you know that's the on off switch so turn that on um, you know pretty early <laughs> you know in, in, in terms of adding this signal into your sound Okay, the next switch is the PFL or pre fader listen switch. You want to press this switch to send the signal to your headphones, your monitor out, and to the digital meter. So we press this switch when we want to see how loud the signal is on the meter, particularly on this Yamaha keyboard or Yamaha mixing board that we use at Little Drummer Boy Recordings. The next aspect of a mixing board is what I think most people look at when they think about mixing boards and this is the channel fader this adjusts the volume level of the channels signal how loud is it and you want to adjust this volume between the various channels okay 
Now, this is different than the gain because you want to start with the gain to determine how loud that signal is coming in. But then the channel fader is going to basically allow you to adjust the overall volume that we're hearing and the overall volume balance between the different sources on the mixing board. So that's the channel fader. You know, there's a couple other switches that are going to come into play right next to the channel fader. And those are, again, what we call switches. They're basically our, our busing or our group switches. The first switch is switch 1, 2. It's going to send the mix or assign it to group 1, 2 bus. And again, we'll talk about busing you know, in, in a subsequent video. The next switch is 3, 4 switch. You're going to press that to assign this particular channel to group 3, 4. Okay? And then the final switch should be called the stereo switch. It says one, two switch, but it's the stereo switch. It's going to send the signal to the stereo switch. You want to press that to assign the channel signal to stereo, your main stereo or stereo left, right bus. So most of the time you're going to have that red switch pressed, but then we can get into busing. We can get into grouping channels together and we'll do that. But again, this is the channel strip. When you look at a mixing board, it's basically a number of channel switches or channel strips that repeat up and down that mixing board. If you know what one channel does, you know what they all do. So, get ready for the quiz. Make sure you understand what this channel strip does. After we deal with the channel strip, we will get into um, the stereo channel strips and we'll get into busing. But, good luck on this upcoming quiz. Dad, the mixing board. Can I tell, can I tell you something now?